Hello everyone, welcome to today's live stream. Joining us today, we have Dane Johnson and Dave Tyner. Uh, Dane Johnson, who is head <laughs> of pretty much all of the awesome content you get to see at Omniverse. And Dave Tyner, if, if you guys have been, uh, you know, looking at the forums, looking at tutorials, uh, he's always there to jump in and help. Uh, really awesome today because we are going to be talking about the funnest con contest that we have announced so far, uh, Machinima. So without further ado, let me hand it over to Dane Johnson. Dane, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Hey, yeah, no problem. Um, first, fair warning to everybody who's not in the Midwest of the United States. We've got a lot of weather coming in. So if I just like disappear randomly, uh, well, yeah, I got hit by lightning or something like that. But until then, <laughs> I'll be with you and we'll, we'll jump in here. Uh, yeah, and, and Dave is like my right-hand man here. He is a... Uh, machinimator at heart as well he's been doing machinima for i don't know you, you did it back with gears of war and stuff yeah, like that yeah. is that right many, yeah many years work with uh, guys like kutra and uh yeah a bunch of did a bunch of stuff but uh, really excited to take it all into machinima and omniverse now yep step up the game yeah so i mean we've got we've got a lot of new features that came in with the latest versions of uh, Machinima. You know, we just released this version yesterday, uh, along with the contest that's live now. Um, what was really kind of exciting about the beginning of the contest is the intro video that got created for this was made by Rooster Teeth, who, uh, uh, I mean, if you've ever seen Red vs. Blue, it's the same studio. So it was really cool to get them to come in, try Machinima, make a cool video from it, um, and kind of do it in a pretty effective amount of time. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, um, Wendy, can we go ahead and switch to my screen and I'll walk everybody through Absolutely. Machinima. All right. So this is, uh, I'm, I'm just checking to make sure it's showing up right on the screen. doesn't look like it actually. Oh, you only got a little bit of my, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's always a little delayed. Um, so this is this is Machinima 2022.1. Um, this is the first beta in a in a series of releases that we'll be doing over the next you know um, basically over the contest series, trying to make things more stable. Uh, you know any any last minute feature requests that are required, all, all that kind of good stuff. Um, but what I want to walk you through is some of the new features for those who are returning, and also kind of show you a little bit about Machinima for people that are seeing it for the very first time. Um, so Machinima is based on Kit. Kit is our framework for a lot of the applications we make inside of Omniverse. Uh, another very large program that we that we put out is called Create. Um, and everything that's in that latest Create 2022.1 release is also in Machinima. Machinima is uh, built specifically with some workflows in mind around making um, you know making Machinima, making making videos from game content, making videos. Uh, as easy and as fast as you can. And to that end, one of the one of the big differences that we have in Machinima versus Create is that we pre-include content from some of our our uh, our partners in the gaming space. Uh, in this release that we just had, we we added Mech Warrior content. So we're starting right now with with uh, five mechs that you can kind of see here. When you first load up the application, you'll see you'll, you'll have an asset store or an assets right here. And and if you just click this, you can see assets from from our various sponsors or our various partners uh we got mech warrior 5 squad and if you click on it um it'll populate if my internet decides to there we go decides to work with me so you know we've got over 120 characters from squad a bunch of different props and, and assets from uh one of their levels um we have uh mountain blade banner lord so it's actually mountain blade 2 banner lord um Got a few characters from there, a bunch of props from their levels, weapons, etc. So a lot of stuff to kind of get you started. Um, the other thing that you kind of just generally want to say is there's a lot of ingest methods into Omniverse, and, and if you've been you know paying attention or you know looking at some of how Omniverse works, you know we can take in stuff from Blender, Maya, Max, UE4, and now UE5. Um, we have so we have connectors to all these different DCC tools. Uh, we have import methods, you know, FBX, OBJ, kind of in any uh, import method you can think of. You should be able to get it into Machinima 
and start messing messing around, playing around. Um, so, yeah, starting on this bottom left-hand corner, uh, we have our assets, and that's where they are. Now, what I want to point out is in this version, we don't yet have an animation browser. We're, we're kind of working on that in the side. So if you do install a Nucleus, the rest of it is under the NVIDIA folder, assets, machinima. So that's where all the... That's where all the goodies are going to be. Um, under Bannerlord, we have character animations. Uh, we have an audio to face set up, so you can do audio to face. Um, we will have some Mech Warrior animations coming soon. So right now, like I said, I just have the, the five characters. We're going to keep rolling out more and more content. I'll post it to Discord and the forums when the new content shows up. Um, and of course, Squad, we also have a, a whole slew of, of animations available here. Uh, in our viewport, you know, we have, um, we've added IRA to this version, which I don't believe was in the first Machinima version. I could be completely wrong. We had IRA then, but I don't think we did. I think we just had uh, real time and path traced. So, so now we have a third option for rendering inside of Machinima. And, uh, now let's get into, let's get into the cooler stuff before I get, get too deep. But, but yeah, that, that's, that's kind of the heart and soul of Machinima, right? Is, is I'm going to, whatever, what we're going to show you over the next, uh, 45 minutes or so is is you know how you can animate in new ways and in some traditional ways because that that's been the big ways we've kind of improved for this release um, so let's start with actually I, I promised I would say one thing for one of our users we did change that we used to have a, a sky browser in the previous machinima and now we have what's called the environment browser so what the environment browser does kind of lets you have quick and easy environment setup. Um, so we have a bunch of HDRIs that you can kind of click on. We also have uh, a bunch of dynamic skies. And if you select one of these, let me go ahead and pull up a dynamic sky. And you can see here, so it's got clouds and stuff like that. But we actually do have a sun study as well. So you can sit here and animate it out your, your time of day. So this used to be in two different extensions. It was in uh, sky browser and the, um, the sun study now it is all combined in environments so let's go ahead and let's pick a well, what do I want this to look like we're gonna go I think I'm gonna do the abandoned parking abandoned parking lot which is my favorite and you double clicked on that Dane to get it to populate yeah double click thank you Appreciate that. You can also right click and it says set environment or something. And something else that's kind of cool. Um, I kind of want to show you this is a brand new rendering feature of this version. I just dropped down a plane. I don't know if you saw that. I went create mesh plane. Uh, we have this new feature called uh, matte rendering. So I can go to right click on this, go to add rendering set matte object. And you're like, well, I saw absolutely nothing. Thanks, Dane. That was really helpful. Because what I should have done is drop down an asset first. So I've got this big annihilator. I've got this plane. I'm going to go to PT. And we now can, um, we now can like, uh, you know, kind of have that generated shadow on the ground. So you can kind of have these people, you know, fit into their HGRI environment. And it's really easy if you want to make kind of simple shorts. You don't want to build out a whole set. Right, and at, and now oh, this is this is actually something important. That default light's still in there. Let me delete that sunlight. Now, now we're actually getting the proper lighting and rendering from this HDRI environment. Um, but this is this is just really helpful because I can make very very quick videos where um, you know I just have this person maybe have them walk around or move something like that, and I'll, and, and it'll look like he's sitting in this really advanced you know HDRI environment. Uh, so for we thought this was really important for Machinima specifically because. You know, it's all you know about speed and, and being able to animate as fast and as about speed uh, and, and uh, being able aggressive to as, as I can. can. Um, so that's that's matte rendering, really important. I think it'll be really useful for a lot of you out there. And um, Dane, uh, really quick, I believe you can drop a material on that matte object, and you can. It'll respect the reflectivity. And that's right. So right now it's a default reflectivity. Um, let me go ahead. Um, I, I clicked on the plane. Right click, create material. Omni PBR is kind of our basic material. Um, we use it most of the time just because it's 
it's kind of the uh, basic the standard PBR material. material flow. If you want to do like transmission and things like that, there's Omni Surface. Um, but yeah, let's let's show that real quick. So right now this is kind of that default roughness. But if I, oh boy, if I get it like really metallic, right? I can actually now see that even though I've got that shadow going, it thinks it's like a metal floor. So if this HDRI was a nice metallic floor, I could still get that reflection on that HDRI. Which is like a warehouse floor or something. Yeah. yeah, right, exactly. Actually I have one of those. Let's 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 go ahead and let's pop one of those in. Oh, yeah, so this that. is like a really nice warehouse, right? And let me uh get a little bit more. But yeah, so now you could be like, oh yeah, that's totally let me just tweak it a little bit and now it feels like hey this mech is sitting in this warehouse floor. Um Something kind of important to note for those doing camera animations when it comes to, to this rendering technique, if you're not familiar with it, um, you can only do what would be like a panel, uh, a, a, a panning type of like panel noting node. I am all over my words right now. I can only do this with my camera. <laughs> <laughs> and to, to keep it uh, kind of locked in place right now, he can move around as much as he wants. Um, and I should have grabbed, let me grab an asset that, that I can actually throw an animation on. He's going to be, a, he's going to be a wee lad compared to, compared to this giant. Hey buddy. Um, if I take him and you're going to a little preview of the sequencer before I talk about it and I grab an animation for him. So you just drag the reference into the sequencer there. That's right. Yep. Everything is drag and drop. But you can see he can he can move around in here. Um, do I have a better like walk? I don't I don't think any of these walks have root oh, motion. Oh, they do. Yeah, he does. Boop. Uh, but you can see. Let me get right down on him. That we can we, as long as we do just a panel or uh, you know uh, just a node movement, he should be should be just fine. Have I talked enough about matte rendering? I feel like I've, I've yeah, talked no, enough it's, about it. It's <laughs> solid. Uh, so that's that's that rendering feature. I just thought it would be pretty useful for a lot of people. You can imagine you can set up a bunch of different cameras and and get it all right, and and you would actually be able to do um, kind of a full sequence without ever building out a stage, which which would be pretty cool. Or you could just minimally build out a stage, right? Because something that we have also is in the asset store. Ah, another new feature. Um, we have all sorts of, let me pull this out over here so I can have it more up in your face. Uh, wh while you're kind of watching this, you can see we just have panels kind of everywhere. You can move them around, tear them around, build your own layout however you want. And then uh, the new feature we also have is in layouts as you can save that configuration and then load it later pretty useful i'm not going to do it during the stream just because uh i want to keep moving but save we have all uh, yeah, i can say save it. it to local disk don't save it to nucleus we gotta good call we gotta solve that problem right now yep but we do have a bunch of um nvidia assets that you can use we built we built a whole bunch of uh stuff for residential and industrial um that you can just kind of drag and drop and use include you know in addition to all of the the machinima stuff we were showing earlier um, but we also have access directly to sketchfab and you can just double click and i don't have my password entered but you know if i put in my my email and password it would download this asset and i could drag and drop it right into my stage we'll cover our eyes if you want to do that <laughs> no it's all right uh but, but no this is this is pretty cool it's kind of direct Direct, uh, direct, direct link to sketch. So, on the assets, we do have a quick question. Uh, sure. Somebody's asking in the stream, uh, your last live stream, so you can dance, I think it was, uh, you had showed off a house, um, and the viewer rec uh, recollected that you were going to add that house to the assets. Do you know if that that's in there? Hasn't happened yet. Um, we have, we do have some new sample stages and stuff like that coming. Just we didn't get it in for that release. Man, that is a good memory, though. Uh, I will get back to you on when that might end up showing up in our content store. Okay, cool. And for anyone watching, we also have a Machinima channel on our Discord server. So feel free to post there. 
uh, you'll often find Dane Train hanging out in there. So, so let's um, while we're here and while we're talking about sequencer, let's start getting into um, some of the new animation stuff. Right, that, that's some of the new cool stuff. So we, we we revamped sequencer a bit to try to make it you know kind of based on feedback and all sorts of things like that to make it a little bit more user friendly, uh, a little bit quicker, kind of all that good stuff. So. What, let me walk through kind of the common issues and how we are solving them. So before I do that, let me grab a squad character so I have enough kind of characters here to do what I wanted to show. All right. So I've got my two characters. Move them over here a little bit. Um, so... We can drag and drop any any character that has a skeleton mesh, you know, you can drag and drop it right in here and make a track. Uh, this track right now does not have an animation associated with it. It has a start time, it has an end time. If you have an animation, skeletal animation, we can also th this this asset happens to have a skeletal animation in it. I can drag and drop that straight on there as well and it'll apply. And now you'll see that this is the name of the actor and this is the name of the uh, animation that's applied. Once we kind of have that up and running, we now have three new buttons right here. Top one is to scale. So this will make it, you know, slow-mo. Or if I yeah. hear him. Yeah, exactly. We can have it, have it go fast-mo. It's fast-mo word. We're going with it. Um, it is now. If you ever need to type in these numbers, if you go to the properties panel, all this stuff is available in the properties panel if the clip is selected, which right now it is. So if I click on the ground, it's not. Click on the clip, here's the properties. So I, you know, I, I want to set very specifically the um, the play rate, the scale. I can sit here and do one, and you actually can see it reflects over here in the sequencer as well. These are these are linked. Uh, the middle one is a trim. So if I want it to end early, or if I want it to end and hold, right? So now I can say. All right, he's going to go through his clapping, and then I want him to just immediately boop, hold in that pose. We do have little clicks there, so when I get back to normal, it's going to pop right to where it's supposed to be. And then finally, we have uh, a drag to loop. So we can have that have a nice, a nice loop. Those are the three kind of new buttons. Um, that we have going on there, but we also have the ability to split. So if for some reason, I want him to you know, do this and I actually want to split it into two clips. I can now easily split it where he'll end there and he starts over again. So that way I could sit here and um, uh, you know, have basically have this empty space like a hold and then have him start, have him start dancing again. A couple uh, of quick questions. Yeah. Um, so one is uh, from Coding Carlos. Hey, Carlos. Can you make model animation in Omniverse, or does it have to be imported? Ah, we'll get to that. So um, I'm going to show the pose tracker here in, in a little bit, which is our way of generating animation inside of Machinima. I cannot animate bones yet or joints yet. So if you wanted to hand animate a character, that will be not this version. It's It's in our, you know. We definitely want to do it too. So that'll be coming in the future. Awesome. And we actually have a question from uh, our first Omniverse ambassador, Pekka Varis. He's asking, uh, slow-mo, does it interpolate the movements? Uh, yeah, it's not going to be jerky. Right, it'll be a smooth, it'll be a smooth motion. <laughs> nice and interpolated, yeah. Great. Um. But I did want to address, since we're in Sequencer, I'm going to do a nice segue here if you're excited about it. Uh, one of the earliest in issues that, that someone said, if you're not like an animator, you never like, you know, kind of animated or anything like that before, um, some things are not going to be super obvious. And, and that was kind of when we looked into Machinimo, we really wanted to make this as easy as it can be for for anybody for for anybody who's just you know maybe familiar with 3d design and, and work like that but maybe hasn't dove in on animation a lot and and the first thing someone asked was you know we shipped with all these animations for the squad character and they're like 
why can't I use that on the Banner Lord character? Uh, and the answer is they have different skeletons, right? Their bone hierarchies are different. They're, they're built entirely different. They're built by two totally different companies. And that answer is kind of lame, right? It's like, come on, I, I'm looking as a human, I'm looking at it, I'm like, that guy's moving like this. That guy looks like he's another human. Why can't I just move that animation from one person to the other? And we're like, yeah, totally agree. Let's fix that. So under the animation thing, we, we've actually added um, retargeting. And it's it's uh, it's pretty simple. So I, I kind of want to wanna show you this real quick. Uh, and we'll walk through it step by step. So I have my two characters. Neither of them have had retargeting set up. I'm going to go ahead and click on my uh, Banner Lord character. I'm going to find him in the tree here. I'm going to click on it. You'll see auto setup, successfully added retargeting setup for your character. Um, it, it will do its best to figure it out right off the bat. For humanoids, it's it, it's generally good, gets it every time. Um, and then I'm going to go over to my, my other character. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to select him. Boom. I have been auto retargeted. So now both of these assets have uh, a retargeting definition to them. The next step is I've added that animation, this emote clapping. All I need to do is say, hey, this animation, what skeleton did it come from? So I go, I click on the animation, I go add animation skeleton binding. This this came from the squad character, so I'm gonna go ahead and where's that squad skeleton? He is. It's right here. So I'm gonna associate that animation with that character, and now uh, now check this out. So I'm dragging the squad character. You know, I'm gonna put that emote clapping on him. That should work. Same same skeleton. Yeah, get it, get it. Makes sense. But now that I've retargeted these, that animation can work on both characters. Man, that's and so that's, good. That's as easy as it is. So. You know, if you went and set up the Mech Warrior character to have some retargeting and, you know, put it in a T pose, and you could have him doing the same animation. So, we really hope this unlocks a lot of people because you can get animations from all over the place, right? You can get them from multiple download sources, stuff like that. But now, you know, whatever your character is, I'm going to figure out a way to get him to work. Um, you know, one, one person, let's, let's grab. I'm going to do this on the fly. I don't actually know if this is going to work, but we're going for it. I really want to see what that looks like on, on like a, a Mine Ways character. Not Minecraft, Mine Ways. Um, let me load the... Come on, textures. Load up. This is my internet taking its time. But I'll go ahead and auto-retarget him while my textures download. Oh my gosh. Yeah, see, so it works on him too. Rad. Pretty fun. Hey, hey textures. <laughs> yeah, so um, really excited about retargeting, just kind of in general. Uh, you know, the engineers, engineers that have been working on this have been basically hearing us complain about it <laughs> and we just keep saying make it easier make it easier make it easier make it easier and, and they just keep answering and making it easier making it easier uh so one of the big reasons we needed this outside of the issue i just talked about was we have a new um and let me go ahead and delete all these super cool animations is the other thing that we added and i'm gonna go ahead and turn off retargeting uh but i'm gonna actually pull it back up and uh, da, 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 take that that off of there um, is we've added a new method of doing pose tracking so what is what is pose tracking so we have an SDK that we've been working on um, from uh, it's currently called Maxine and it has all sorts of really cool AI driven algorithms to just try to make your life easier and the one in particular that we were really interested in was, hey, um, I want to do mocap with Machinima. And right now, your answer a lot of times is go buy a suit, 
or go buy um, some sort of expensive camera setup. It's not really, uh, you, you know, friendly to just jump in. Um, now, those those solutions are all phenomenal. Like, don't get me wrong. If you, if you own a, a really nice suit and stuff like that, you're going to get amazing results. Uh, but we wanted something like super easy that anybody could try to use. And we, we integrated into Machinima. Uh, we used to be partnered with Wrench. They were great partners. They ended up getting purchased. Um, and, and no longer were you know part of our ecosystem, uh, so we were like, all right, we're gonna we got our own. Let's let's rock and roll. Um, and so we have two different ways of using this. One is through you can do your live webcam. So any sort of you can do if you have an OBS webcam, you know, if it, you basically hit stream live, it'll give you a selection of what cameras to use, and uh, you know have a dance party. Um, the other way, which we thought was really really helpful, is we will be able we just ingest a video source. So you got an MP4, you know, you took your phone out, you recorded a bunch of kids playing soccer, you know, whatever, right? Take your movie file, bring it to your computer, select it here, and I'll be able to take that motion and try to get it onto your character. So let me just walk you through real quick. Let's um, let's have this guy. Well, let's do it with, with the squad character for right now. So you, uh, again, like I said, this was one of the real big benefits to having this this retargeting is I can select this character. Look, he's already got a retarget, so it says it's already ready. Um, I will start the engine and hit play, and then I'll just calibrate my ground. And now from, you know, from this video over here on the left, I'm able to drive animation for my squad character. So as you can imagine, you know, you can kind of set up whatever scenario you want. Um, Take a video of this, pull it in, and you know, make your really quick, really quick sequences. Uh, the other thing we've kind of added, um, just while I while I have it here, we do have some some different uh, smoothing levels. So you know, if you want it to be a little less jittery, stuff like that, or you want more of the uh, you know hard hitting action, you know, you can kind of adjust that level. Um, we do have the ability to ingest a uh, hand pose. Now your retargeting has to be set up properly. You have to go a little deeper in the retargeting tool and make sure you've got fingers and stuff properly retarget, retargeted. Um, but I can, I can uh, override those hand poses. But w one thing that's really nice is we're able to kind of instantly record. So um, let me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and clip this because hey, this gives me a chance to show you more features while I'm at it. I can clip the start and I can clip the end of how I want this to play. So I only want, you know, frame 200 to 400. Actually, I'm going to do even less. I'm going to do 300. Just sake of brevity, because I, I still want to get to Dave's stuff. And I've still totally. got a long list. <laughs> um, so, you know, I've got that set to like three, to 100 frames. I can set a take name. So, uh, you know, 100 frames hit record it'll record it out dude that is the coolest thing yeah i gotta say and you can actually select your target I, you know what I, I didn't put this on um nucleus let me do that real quick so i don't have to browse to my local my local host what are Ooh, there was some lightning <laughs> Y'all hear thunder? I saw. I'm a, I apologize. There it is. Um, okay, so that's now out on my local host. Where's my guy? I'm gonna put him here. Where did I put that? I put it under projects. I just put it right in the front. Drag and drop. So yeah, now you can use that right there in your in your animation. So uh, we're pretty excited about that. Um, we're gonna be making a ton of improvements over time. We've got a lot of, we got a backlog of, uh, you know, better, better filtering, um, improvements to the actual pose tracking, you know, trying to get better ground placement. Um, we're really excited about where this technology will go we think we have a, a long, nice long runway of improvements that we're going to keep pushing on post tracking. 
Um, as you can imagine, this technology has use cases all over the place. Right here, we want to do it to make fun little videos. Um, but but uh, yeah, hopefully hopefully you can do some pretty cool stuff with this. Um, some some things to make you have a better experience. If it can't see the limb right now, right, it can't do a great job of understanding where it is. Uh, so just make sure that when you set up your your shots, you know, think about occlusions ahead of time. Maybe do multiple shots, right, so that um, that you can make sure you have a good frontal uh, look at your character when you can. Um, think about good lighting. You know, it, it does a great job, but just anything you can do to give it an even easier time, I'm sure it's going to appreciate. Now that I've gone through pose tracker, let's close that out. Um, the last two things, and I'm going to go over these briefly because, uh, like I said, I have, I have something that I want Dave to kind of show you, is now we have two different animation methods. Uh, there's tutorials on these, so I won't go too deep in them right now, but, but um, if you want to animate a prim uh, or camera or stuff like that, we now use uh, the curve editor. So let me get to this little box. My stage is getting a little messy. Slip box. We have curve editor and timeline. Both of these allow you to uh, animate not only um, you know transforms and stuff like that, but they'll also let you animate properties. So if I click on this cube, I can uh, specifically say, "Hey, I just want to set keys on the X transform, or maybe I want to set keys on all three rotations." You actually see them start populating over here. I'm not sure if you're seeing that. Let me, you know, I have X translate, rotate, rotate, rotate. I can sit here and go to zero and say, hey, you know, I'm going to click these three. I'm going to make a key for just those three. I'm going to go a few frames, rotate them, make key for just those three attributes. I can frame my my thing, and I can see that my rotate, you know. And, and it's it's pretty easy to just grab these keys, move them around. If, if you've done any sort of traditional you know, kind of curve editing style animation, um, this should be fairly familiar. But like I said, we have some tutorials on this. Uh, and it, and it the, I guess the fun thing is it works for not only uh, not only you know transforms and rotations and stuff like that, but it also works for USD properties. So you can animate. Uh, material properties like you know what's my albedo color what's my this and that i can i can also do you know let's let's grab this let's grab this camera um actually something important i want to talk about real quick on cameras uh dave is going to talk about the aim constraint for cameras which i think is the best way to animate a camera right now um but also if you're gonna if you're gonna animate it in here i do recommend that you make sure your rotation order is yxz it's pretty common rotation order for, for animating cameras in a Y-up space. Um, the next release of Machinima, we will, be we will be defaulting that value. We just didn't in this release. Uh, but I did want to show how to set focal length. So I'm going to do a focus distance of like 500 and two f-stop. We get in, we get in real tight. We'll do something. We'll do something silly like that, and I can I can set a key distance and come out here. I don't know. Change the focus distance and set another key. Which I'm gonna do. Now I can set the key here. I can set the key here. I can set the key here. Like set the key wherever you want, because apparently we set the key in like twelve thousand spots. But yeah, you can see we can now animate things like like focus distance, and what uh, Dave will be showing you next is is through Action Graph and some of the more procedural tools that we've started to put into Create and Machinima. Um, you know, you'll be able to drive these on events, for instance. Okay, just talked about a lot of stuff. I'm actually going to hang hand it over to Dave. And I wanted him to kind of give you guys a little uh, sneak peek into action graph, push graph, omni graph, and kind of the constraints, the new constraints, and some of the cool stuff that could happen there. So, um, Dave, take it All away. Right. Thanks, Dane. It's amazing stuff, man. It's uh, 
super useful tool. Uh, so are we sharing my screen yet? Yes, sir. Yep. Okay, awesome. Good. Yep, so this is what we're going to attempt to make here is just um, we have a, a drone that's flying along a path and uh, have a camera that's following it along its trajectory. You have to make the sound effects up yourself. So, yep. Okay, let's do it. Don't need to save that. Pretty pretty solid sound effects. Thank you. Yeah, I've been working on them. All right. So uh, I guess the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to I want to get this drone. You can pick any object. I'm just grabbing the drone out of the uh, squad assets here, and I'm going to drop that in my stage. And I'm just going to um, create well, create an X form. And I'm going to call it UAV pause. Uh, control D to duplicate that, double click it, UAV rotation. I'm going to parent the rotation to the position, and then I'm going to parent the UAV to the uh, rotation. All right. And we're done. <laughs> no. OK, so the next thing I want to do is I want to create my camera. So I'm going to right click here on the stage, create a camera. I want a camera target, which I'm going to make a sphere. And then I want my. Uh, my up vector, which is going to be my cone. So I'm going to move that up a little bit, maybe uh, scale it down. And move the sphere out, scale it down. And let's make that uh, minus 500. OK, fantastic. So then um, with my sphere selected, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my camera. And I'm going to uh, say animation constraints. I don't want to do an aim constraint. And you're like, no, that's a weird aim. <laughs> well, that's OK. Um, first thing you notice is that uh, it's created a push graph, which is my understanding. And Dane will probably correct me that a push graph will run, um, will run as you manipulate things in the viewport. Like the timeline doesn't have to be active. Uh, to to get that to run the action graph, I'm going to show you a little bit later. That does require the uh, the animation to be playing. Just so you know. All right. So to fix this little offset problem, I'm going to. Uh, and by the way, I just moved my property over here just because I like to see all of my properties. Uh, I'm going to come down here and I want to maintain my offset from the sphere. So you select that maintain offset, and then I also want my uh, my cone here to be my up node so that I can animate that and control the role of the camera. So world up type is going to be an object. And I'm going to say set world up object. And I know it says mesh, mesh, mesh. Um, but you can, a couple ways you can do this. You can select it. You can see it's world cone, which is what I want. You can also toggle the, uh, the eyeball there. And you'll see it uh, disappear. OK, so I just set those things. So now if I select the cone, the camera should roll. And it does. That's awesome. Now I just want to create uh, another X form here called the camera pause. And I want the camera. Oh, yes. That's right. I want the camera and the cone <laughs> drop in there. And then um, I want to create an X form here. And I want to move that X form out um, so it's on top of my, uh, my sphere like I had. Then I'm going to drop sphere in there. I'm just going to rename that cam target. And I will create yet another X form. I'm going to call it cam rig. I'm just going to drop those X guys. Swarms for days. Yes. Build that rig. All right. So now if I select my camera target and I. Hey. So yeah. this, this particular camera rig you're building, um, we're planning on handing this out to like all pre set up for you guys. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure how I'm going to deploy it. I might just throw it on the forums. I might put it on. NVIDIA mount. I'll let you know. 
Okay, so now you can see when I move my target around, camera follows, and we have our aim constraint, which is awesome. So now what I want to do is I'm going to get into um, the action graph. I'm going to create a path here that uh, my UAV is just going to follow. Everything works out. So uh, I'll create a new action graph here. And I'm going to double click it, call it path follow. All right. And let's go ahead and make a path. So once again, X form. I call this path. I'm going to duplicate it a couple times. Call it 0.01 and 0.02. Awesome. And then I'm going to drag those under path because I want to be able to move the path around. Um, so I, I want to parent that to uh, to a parent. Okay. So now that we have that, we can start working on our action graph. So I'm going to right click on path follow, open graph. We don't have anything. And we're just going to start dropping a bunch of nodes in here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to import those points. So I'll import those. And I'll just change this to curve, actually. And I'm going to get uh, transform to curve, points on curve. And this is going to dictate, you know, positionally where my UAV is according to the uh, length of the path. So the first thing I want to do here is select on this um, the import node and I want to add my targets. So come in here to the path. I want in order. Okay, you want point one, point two. That's awesome. And that'll do it for that. So then I want an on tick node. So it's going to control the timing, and then I want a uh, constant double. It's just a fancy word for number. And we are going to um, set that to be the length of our animation. So I'm down here, I'm going to set my total length to 200. I'm going to set my value for that double to 200. And then I need to divide those. So divide those to get where I am along that path according to um, what frame I'm at. So I'm going to drop frame into divide. I'm going to drop the constant into d divide. And that's great. And this point on curve, that's going to be my time value. Oops. OK, I might as well wire this guy, this bundle, up to there. And that bundle out to there. OK. We are closing in on it. And then I need to be able to convert that to a double because it's going into the transform spot. All right. So there we go. OK, so now what I want to do is I, what do I want to move along that path is the question. So I want to move the UAV, which I will now unhide. And I'm going to grab that, and I'm just going to drag that into the um, action graph here. And I'm going to say right all attributes. And then I'm going to wire up the out to the in. And I'm going to wire that into the uh, translate. All right. So let's take our points here. I'm going to zoom way, way out. I'm going to take point one and put it way over there. And I'm going to take point two, put it way over here somewhere. Oh, and another thing, if you want to be able to see the curve, oh, just type in visualization here. This will let you um, see your curve here. So we want to go out from there and into, so out from the transform to curve into the uh, curve bundle there. OK, cool. And let's see how we did. So there's my curve, and there's my drone. And you notice it's facing the wrong way, so that's fine. We're just going to grab our rotation here, turn on um, snaps. 
by the way, handy. If you hold that down, snap settings, you can set your rotation and position snaps. So. All right, so that looks good. And so that's about right. I was gonna say maybe it looks a little fast. We can play, you can play with the um, dynamically here. If I grab, uh, if I grab point two, we can shorten that up. And it'll move slower, obviously, when I shorten it. Yeah, I love that that's dynamic. Yeah, it's awesome. We can do all that with it. Yeah, that's okay. Rad. So now let's get uh, let's get the camera looking at the UAV. So I'm going to slide my camera back, and there's my camera target. It's there. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to position the camera target over over the UAV. Oh, oh, slow down. Yeah, look at that. Nice shot. Okay. And then I want to um, make that target follow the UAV. So I'm going to select the parent, right, Dane? <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for this part. <laughs> Got to get it in the right order. Yeah, get in the right order. Select the parent, select the child. Come up here to, to animation, constraints, transform constraints. OK, and we'll switch now to my camera. And now the Look camera is following Whoa. You got a gimbal lock. Uh, no, I tried to move the camera. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I got to move it. I was like, how did you do that? That's amazing. <laughs> That's so quick. You did a barrel roll. All right. So uh, let's go back here. Perspective. And I'm going to grab my camera rig here. And I'm just going to move it to wherever I want that to be. So maybe like there. Jump back to here, and I'm gonna just gonna go ahead now and disconnect the, curve the uh, visualization yeah. to the curve so we don't see it. So, okay, mm. awesome. So now let's just quickly add an environment here, and I like uh, Table Mountain. Nice big expansive environment, and I can run that animation again. And um, yeah, I mean, play all around with the settings and where things go and whatever. Uh, but if I wanted to here, that, by the way, will conclude the uh, action graph portion <laughs> of the demo. But uh, I can come to the curve editor like Dane was doing and um, slide that back to zero. And then for my camera here, uh, I want to set the focal length. So I want it to kind of um, zoom in as it's flying away. So just set my key there. And then at 200, I'm going to uh, up this to, let's say, like 128. Right, and nice. Mm -hmm. Set a key there. Do my zoom extents. Now. Play it. And then I can also slide this over, make it so it uh, doesn't kick off right away. One of those. And then it zooms in. Yeah, right. you could take Action Graph to do even more stuff, right? You could, you could add. Um, you could add f-stop changes and all, all sorts oh, of stuff. Yeah. And you could do that, you know, you could do that focus distance. You could have it uh, right on yeah. the character, for instance. Yeah. So, so it, yeah, really cool. Yeah. And so next time uh, we all get together, um, I hope to show you 
multiple points on the path and then like driving a car around it and how to orient the car according to the path and then orient the wheels turning according to the uh, distance traveled along the path. So, but we'll have to wait till next time for that. Yep. You know, uh, one, one quick, uh, if we have time for um, a quick final thing, uh, Vince reminded us it would be a good idea to show people how to use the asset collector so people know how to, um, mm. you know, pair your submission. Unless you want to cover that in part two of this epic series. I, I don't know. Do you want to just, I mean, it's the right click collect, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you have it able for us real quick. And while you're pulling that up, I do see a question about uh, baking the anim to FBX animation. Yeah. If you go to file X, like, like if you opened up that animation file in Machinima and went file export, you can ex export as FBX. So yes, you can get the animation out. Uh, you could also open it up in like Maya or Blender in USD format. Um, Blender does not yet have USD scale import, but it's high on my list. So, all right, go for it. Yeah, and so to collect, super easy. You just select the USD that you want to gather up and right click on it and say collect asset. And then uh, you can tell it where you want it to collect it to. And that will make it, that will pull all the assets from where they live. It'll bake it all down into a, um, a folder that you can then, right. you know, it's not path to anything but the folder. All the, all the paths are relative to the folder root, so it's really easy to throw stuff around that way. Okay. Ta -da. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> I think that's uh, that's all we wanted to show today. Um, kind of give you guys everybody an introduction into the latest Machinima release. You know, kind of what I said earlier. Um, you know, at, over the next uh, weeks, month or so, we'll be, um, you know, adding a couple little features here and there. But like, oh man, if I really needed this, you know, we'll try, we'll try to get it done. But mostly, we're going to be working on stability, making this as, uh, you know, smooth of a of an application as we can for you. Um, I will point out that you know the one feature request I have got that I'm going to try to work as hard as I can on is um, we did lose keyframer and it had one little button on it that was really nice which was automatically setting your focus distance so we're well aware we lost that one feature um and the, working to work around that guy uh thanks everybody for joining um you know we really appreciate taking the time to check machinima out and i'll be in the forums and i will do my best to be in discord as well try to answer questions and whenever we get I said, what I'm really excited about this time around, uh, between Dave and a few of our, our other team members, we've been having a lot of fun, making a lot of little shorts, um, and learning a lot about the tool ourselves as well. Uh, and all the, like this action graph stuff, I mean, sky's the limit, right? So we're gonna do everything we can to give everybody really good ideas on how to use it. What, what cool things can I do with it? Um, and so just expect, Expect a lot of those to be popping up in Discord and forums. Keep your eye out. Uh, we'll try to share USD files with you. Um, just kind of show you how we set this stuff up. Awesome. Thank you so much, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure. You have a permanent invite Thank to come you. on whenever you like. <laughs> Sounds Thank good. You. Recurring Thank visitors you. are always welcome. So we have uh, we have a Discord a channel we'll head to now. Uh, if anyone wants to come and hang out for a couple of minutes, community voice chat on the NVIDIA Omniverse Discord. So uh, feel free to come on by uh, and ask your burning question if we didn't hit, hit, get to it on the stream. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week. We're going to be talking about uh, Omniverse Kit 103 and Warp. Uh, so for all you developers out there who uh, don't like Machinima, come on to the uh, stream next week for <laughs> development chat with Damien. Damien, you know there's a couple people out there who... Don't like who, rude. Who doesn't like Machinima? Who doesn't like Machinima? <laughs> Everyone likes <All> right. Machinima. <laughs>